We're in the midst of a huge transformation where our peers, communities, and workplaces are all really melding into one. Welcome to Reimagining Company Culture. My name is Christina and Giordano. She heard hers. And I'm the Senior Partnerships Manager here at All Voices. Today, I'm very excited to welcome our next guest onto the interview series, Erica Raphael. She's the Vice President of People at Muckrack. Erica, thank you so much for being here. If you want to share a little bit about yourself for our listeners, including your pronouns and when you were younger, do you remember how exactly you answered the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Christina. I'm Erica Raphael, VP of People over at Muckrack. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. Um, I live in New York City with my husband and my two kids. Uh, what I wanted to be when I grew up has nothing to do with what I do today. I really loved art and art history. I wanted to work in a museum. I did that actually for most of the beginning of my career and made a transition into people ops along the way. So my background's a little bit non-traditional and my pivot into people ops has been a really interesting transition. I love it. Rarely, if ever, does anyone say when I was a kid or when I was a teenager, I wanted to be in HR, or like I wanted to be in <laughs> Google Ops as well. So I always think it's a kind of fun question to, to start out with. Uh, I would love to know how has your personal journey really led you to be in People Ops and be specifically at Muckrack? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so like I said, I had a pretty non-traditional background. I worked in the art world for probably the first half of my career in various roles ranging from operations to sales. Having done that for a while, I actually had the opportunity to co-found a company with a, a few friends of mine. Um, we co-founded a venture-backed marketplace and I sort of fell into recruiting in people offs like a lot of people do. We sort of figured out how to divide and conquer roles and responsibilities at that org. Um, one of my co-founders was the you know real business strategist and the face of fundraising, another really focused on product. And as a default, I kind of just like, I think I could sell this company to candidates in the same way I have sold products to people in the past. Without realizing it, I ended up in recruiting and that just kind of blossomed into taking on more and more of the people work, which I found that I really, really loved and wanted to do more of. Uh, we were lucky to be able to eventually sell that company. And I really spent a lot of time trying to assess what I loved about that experience. And I realized it was the people side of things. And I, I took a lot of time to figure out how to take that experience and build on it at another org. I took another job as a GM of another online marketplace that was launching in the US. And it gave me the opportunity to really build out that recruiting and people function again. Um, I was having my kids during this time. I took a, a break um, to take them long maternity leave with my daughter. And I was consulting while I was figuring that out, working with a lot of different companies and helping with people related projects. Um, Muckrack was actually one of my clients and it was kind of like at the right place at the right time, realizing that they needed what I had to, to give and we kind of made a, a great match. It was also pre-COVID and I was, because I had two little kids, I was really looking for a company that was committed to distributed work, which was actually pretty hard to find pre-COVID. Uh, not as much now, but knowing that Muckrack was really committed to that work for the long haul, even before COVID made it feel like it was a, really a, the right match for, for me. I love that. And speaking of kind of the reasons why you join, a lot of folks are looking for that distributed work, kind of that flexibility too, and a host of other kind of things from their employers, from their managers as well, learning and development. From your perspective, what are some of the reasons people really come to Muckrack? And also, uh, I also think it's important to get like stay interviews and, and, you know, celebrating anniversaries too. Why do people stay at the organization as well? Yeah, I think there's a, a few things to touch on here. One is a best in class product. We have a really great product people like to work on and sell a product that's good and that customers like and want to, to use. Um, I've definitely been in positions where I've not felt as confident in a product in past organizations and that doesn't make people excited about coming to work. So I know people love the product, 
both within Muckrock and in the market. So that makes it really special. I think you touched on this already, this genuine commitment to distributed work and a real belief that great work can be done from anywhere. That just implies a lot of trust in the people that we hire because you don't have your manager hanging over your shoulder looking at everything you're doing and every move you make. And that appeals to the type of person that wants a lot of autonomy and flexibility and freedom to do their best work. Um, really great colleagues that are committed to collaboration and working towards the same goals. We're also growing really sustainably, which is somewhat unique in, in the market. Um, we had been bootstrapped for more than 10 years and we're operating profitably. We just took our first private equity investment, but the focus continues to be on growing and building a sustainable business for the, for the long term. And I found that a lot of people have been attracted to Muckrack that wanted to get away from the traditional VC model. Yeah, I think that is kind of really important to note around that sustainable growth. You oftentimes hear about hyper growth and, you know, growing as fast as you can, but really thinking about it with intention too. And the people who are carrying the business forward are the folks who are, you know, talking to customers or talking to candidates and current employees collaborating and the way that you do your best work is you feel like you belong to the team, the organization, feel seen, heard, and understood. What are some qualitative and quantitative ways we can really think about measuring this kind of sense of belonging at any organization or best practices you've seen? Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is really top of mind because we just ran our annual engagement survey, which we do every year uh, using Lattice, which I'm a Lattice super fan. Um, but that enables us to gather both qualitative and quantitative feedback. We include a lot of questions around fit and belonging and DEI in general. Um, it also includes an ENPS score, which is for people that don't know, it's how likely people are to recommend their workplace as a place to work for others. And I think that's a really great signal to me that people feel like they belong if they're willing to kind of stick their neck out and recommend and refer people that they know from their network to come work here as well. We also have a really active internal referral program with our employees advocating for other people to come join the team, really without prompting in a way that feels really special to me. Going out on LinkedIn and really sharing about their experiences at Muckrack and why it's a great place to come to come work. Um, we also collect a lot of data around event participation and get a lot of feedback through surveys after all of our social events, both virtual and in real life, see how well received they were, see who was attending, see if people enjoyed them and want to do them again to make sure that we're iterating on the way we create opportunities for engagement and making sure that we're continuing to evolve our thinking about what the best types of events are for the team based on their interests and needs and it's not always the same thing for every one. Um, we have a pretty robust onboarding program that just from day one, makes sure that people have a go-to person that they can feel comfortable and confident with from the get-go. It's really hard joining a distributed company that relies really heavily on Slack. So knowing that you do have that person that you have an immediate personal connection with, I found to be really important. Um, and then just, we, we do a lot of content creation to showcase our employees. We do meet the Muckrack team member features, showcasing folks from different backgrounds and teams that we share internally and externally. A lot of blog content. Um, we do birthday expo day, exposés. So everyone, when it's their birthday, gets to answer a few questions about themselves and share it with the team. So you can learn a little bit more about people besides just what their job function is at work, but how they exist in those other aspects of their lives. We have really high participation in all of those things, which just shows me that people have a comfort in sharing things about themselves, both internally and externally, um, and feel confident and comfortable being representatives of the team. Um, one thing that I'm super excited about in the post-COVID world uh, is we're, we're having our first all-team retreat uh, this, well, in 2023. Um, and the enthusiasm and excitement when we announced that we'd be getting all 250 people on our team together in one place was so palpable. It just feels like people really wanted more opportunities to connect and build those bonds in their life. Yes, we just had our uh, first ever in-person uh, retreat as well. And it was really special to kind of meet people that you have been working with for two plus years. 
uh, in person and you mentioned kind of being open to iterations and you know not taking a kind of one size fits all approach to everybody but really being rooted in uh, kind of a framework for success as well um, and you gave a lot of great examples around that qualitative and quantitative way to think about belonging can you give an example of how you've helped build um, those structures policies or non-negotiables to meet the needs of a really diverse organization yeah totally um one of the things that i really love to speak to on this topic is our geo-neutral compensation philosophy um we have one pay band based on job type per country it means we can really hire talent regardless of location. Folks can live in more rural areas. It's not like we're only able to hire folks in big cities or that you have to live in a big city to be able to join the muckrack team. Um, it, it's really being able to be transparent about those salary bands ha, has been really helpful for our recruitment strategy overall. Um, I know just yesterday, the New York uh, pay transparency laws went into effect, but I'm really, you know, pleased to share that we've been doing that for over a year, even before it was required, because it's really been an asset to our recruitment strategy, rather than uh, kind of detrimental in the ways that I think people fear about being really clear about what, what we pay for different roles. Um, another thing that we rolled out more recently, it was a swap out policy for federal holidays, recognizing that not everyone celebrates the same federal holidays and that they may want some flexibility around that. So giving people the option to swap out a few federal holidays that they might recognize but not observe in favor of holidays that are really important to them. Um, this, uh, this is something new that we're rolling out more, more recently. So we've, we've been excited about that. Um, and then our work from home setup and co-working stipends, we just recognize that not having an office doesn't mean everyone needs to or can work from home or has the ability to do that. It's not always practical based on your living situation. Some people want uh, more social interaction, even if that doesn't mean going to an office. So making sure that we have this work from home set up so that people can work successfully from home, but also have the flexibility to go work elsewhere if they need to has been really important uh, in terms of thinking about making sure we create an inclusive environment for people to work in. Yeah, that hybrid environment, making sure people have the resources that they need as well to be successful working from home too, um, and really thinking about what it means to really empower folks to do their best work and making sure that people, again, just have what they need, uh, which is really important too. Uh, in terms of, you know, the pandemic starting, a lot of folks have been, you know, thinking about what company culture means, what a sense of belonging is, the role of the office. How have you really redefined what employee engagement looks like at Muckrack as well since 2020? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think the biggest thing is that it's not about FaceTime. It's about getting what you need to do done, but also living your life and being engaged doesn't mean you have to be physically present all the time. Doesn't mean you have to be in attendance for a virtual happy hour. We have tons of caregivers on our team, people with side hustles and really like rich lives outside of work. And I think one of the drivers of real engagement is giving people the freedom and flexibility to balance their work and life effectively. Um, so to me, engagement is making sure that people feel like they do have that ability to balance all the things that are important to them and that drives people to feel more committed and excited about their work. Um, but I also think it means we have to be really intentional, intentional about creating opportunities for in real life connection. Um, I mentioned we're doing our first team retreat. We're rolling out travel budgets so that departments can get together more regularly. We have a culture and events committee. We have hubs where we have a bunch of people that live in the same location and we make sure they stay connected. Um, we use Donut, which is an app that kind of connects you to people that you wouldn't otherwise connect with automatically and Slack and gives you an opportunity to talk to people that maybe are outside your department or outside your team. So for, for us, I think the focus on being intentional about how people connect um, and when they connect has been a really important aspect of redefining what en engagement looks like. And it doesn't mean FaceTime or, you know, sitting in an office together. Right. It's not how many clicks, it's not, you know, how many emails and it's really looking about those results um, and kind of towards the business too, offering that flexibility, saying that it is something that is valued at in the organization as well and giving people 
kind of the opportunity to work at their their best times too uh, and really collaborate asynchronously when you're geo dispersed i think communication is even more critical as well can you give an example of what intentional and transparent company communication looks like in practice you know a lot of folks are talking about transparency and that communication but what does it look like yeah, I, I mentioned already, we rely really heavily on Slack. And I think there is a balance between transparency and sharing what's really important and relevant for folks with oversharing and being confusing or having people have kind of information overload and not knowing how to understand the story. Um, so I think it's being really intentional about setting a clear mission, vision, and values and socializing those often and through a lot of different channels, everyone learns and understands in different ways and needs to hear things uh, more than once to, to really get it. So making sure that we're setting the stage for that from day one, but that we don't end with it there. And that it's kind of a message that's repeated throughout the employee journey. It's a combination of writing face-to-face -face and more intimate conversations. We've more recently started doing brown bag lunches with our CEO with smaller groups so that they have the opportunity to ask questions that are relevant to their department or their team. We have an all company, all hands once uh, a month, but getting those more intimate group settings together and getting them on the calendar has proven to be really important and a good way to make sure that people are hearing that message in a way that resonates with them. I also think a big focus for us in the coming year is making sure mid-level managers are equipped with the right messaging and tools. So it's not always coming from leadership to the team as a whole, but that all managers feel like they really understand the mission, mission vision and values and can speak to that to their individual teams. Absolutely, the level managers are so important to that communication, often get so many of the questions that come forward as well from their team too. You mentioned a couple of different ways that you, you do this, especially when you are not in the same time zone or you're not in the same kind of city as well. But when you're thinking about those kind of meaningful moments of connection in a kind of a hybrid work environment, um, are there any other ways you want to highlight that you really think about kind of cultivating or creating those as well from you know, the candidate experience, onboarding to the anniversary of someone at Muckrack and eventually, you know, if they become an alumni of the organization too. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing that I really love that we've been able to carry forward is even as we've grown, we do anniversary messages from the managers to the whole company when it, somebody hits an anniversary milestone. And I find that they're really meaningful messages that are thoughtful and really speak to everyone's individual impact on the team that they've had, just giving folks a moment to shine. We also have a lot of special interest Slack groups that let people find folks that have similar common interests um, and a lot of events where people can get together, even virtually, even if it's not like carving time out of your day, we often have little challenges on Slack. Every Monday morning, we have a Slack message. What did you get up, up to this weekend? And people post photos from wherever they were and whatever they were doing. And you just get to see a little bit more about your colleagues than the work they're producing or another touch point with them beyond just when you need something from them or they, you know, they owe you something. So just creating those human connections and finding ways to do that in a way that feels natural because not everything is going to feel authentic and right to every person. So just giving people a lot of opportunity to choose what what makes sense for them in their life in their day um and what makes them feel connected to the other people on the team yeah i think that goes to your earlier point as well when i asked about communication too people receive information in different ways just like learning styles everybody has a different learning style and just kind of authentic avenues for connection too and creating the space for it at work is really important as well. I think that there are a lot of conversations happening around how to create a really great company culture, um, talking about mental health, talking about really flexibility at work. Is there something that you are most excited to kind of see or hear in the people talent culture space right now? Uh, and this is kind of brought on purpose, but this could be anything. Uh, yeah, and I think I touched on this a little bit earlier, really thinking about how to leverage in-person time differently and more effectively. We get these moments when we can physically be together. We know at this point we can work effectively remotely. We have all the tools to do that. So when we are in person in real life is the best use of our time, whiteboarding or doing those things that we really do have the tools to do effectively, even when we're not physically together. So for me, it's 
thinking about the best ways to use that time to make real and meaningful connections that can carry back over into the virtual world. Um, you know, we're, we're still experimenting with that. We'll see how it goes with our, our first team offsite with this many folks, but I'm really excited to see how we can use that time to, to create really special moments that do enable people to do better work together when we aren't physically in the same place. Yeah, I think it's a huge opportunity to do something different, to really think about, you know, what are the things that we can work on together to create um, really great pathways for, you know, working remotely too. Is there anything, Erica, that I didn't ask that you want to share with folks who are listening or underscoring any kind of key takeaways you hope people really bring with them? Yeah, it's something that you didn't ask, but I, I think about this a lot. It's just really being intentional about the programs and policies you implement. There's so much good inspiration out there. Um, other companies that are doing really exciting and interesting things, but understanding that the same thing isn't gonna work for every organization and that you really have to take what's out there, use it as inspiration, get good ideas, but figure out how to make it your own and how to make it work authentically in your organization. We don't have to reinvent the wheel, but you do sort of have to reinvent it for your company. Um, and I think that's the biggest learning for, for me along the way is take what's already out there, but figure out how to make it, how to make it our own. Rarely can you really copy and paste something that you see out to the world into your company because every person, every organization is different. Use it as inspiration and make it your own. I like that as a kind of a call to action to end our conversation on. Erica, thank you so much for being on Reimagining Company Culture this afternoon. Thank you so much, Christina. Of course, and as a reminder for folks who are listening, at All Voices, we really believe in both employees and employers being seen, heard, and understood. I know it's a requirement for the business to really succeed overall. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Bye.